Look out! Look out! Look out! Mother! Leave. No. Leave him alone. Beasts, leave. Leave him alone. Master Jacob, wake up. Wake up, Master Jacob. What's the matter, Prophet of God? A nightmare? Your voice could be heard from the other room. Yes. It was a horrible nightmare. Some wolves were chasing after a child. They drove the child right over the edge of a cliff. They wanted to devour him. Did you recognize the child? Who was it? He was too far. I couldn't see his face. But his figure resembled that of Joseph. The prophet of God surely knows the interpretation, or he wouldn't be so worried. A calamity is going to befall Jacob's family. God wants not bad for any of his servants. But his servants collude with Satan and then deceive each other. Sleeping will help calm you down. You need some rest. Sure. Did you hear any noise last night? No. We were asleep. We didn't hear anything. I woke for a moment, but I didn't hear anything. Your father's voice woke me up last night. He was dreaming. When I woke him, he said that ten wolves had been attacking a boy who resembled Joseph and drove him off a cliff. And he got up in the middle of the night and caressed and kissed Joseph. But didn't he recognize the child? He said he couldn't see. But of course it was Joseph. Otherwise, he wouldn't have cuddled and caressed Joseph when he woke up. If the child was Joseph, then we brothers must surely be the wolves. <laughs> Do you think it would be funny if your father saw you as wolves? Jacob said he dreamt of ten wolves attacking a boy that looked like Joseph and pushing him off a cliff. That's not a bad dream. What are you saying, Bilha? Jacob saw our children as wolves. You think that's a good dream? The wolves that devour Joseph aren't bad wolves. The children themselves must do something. The children themselves.
What's going on? I think I know. Father thinks about Joseph even at night. He even sees him in his sleep. He takes Joseph wherever he goes and even sleeps beside him. Stop fussing, Judah. We still don't know exactly what Father's dream was. Besides, unlike us, Joseph doesn't have a place or mother. So Father has to take him wherever he goes. We know exactly what Father's dream was. He dreamt of us as wolves. Wolves that devour Joseph. Hello, Father. Hello, Father. You mustn't accept whatever someone says and make a fuss about it. My mother said that you saw us like wolves in your dream, and that we were attacking Joseph, and... That is wrong. I dreamt of a few wolves attacking a child. Neither did the wolves resemble you, nor the child, Joseph. I didn't see any face in my dream. Obviously the ten wolves are us brothers. <laughs> I didn't count the number of wolves in my dream. Why do you think that there were ten? I love all of you. I have always been grateful and thankful for your hard work. But I can't sit Judah, now a grown man, on my lap like a little child. None of you are children anymore. When you were little children, I was kind to you as little children. Sat you on my lap, let you sleep beside me. All of you have had both your mother's love and your father's love. No matter how much love Joseph and his brother have, they'll never have it as much as you did. I wouldn't expect you grown-ups to compare yourselves with children. Dad, Asher, ask your mother how I cuddled you last night. Oh, I was awake last night. You put blankets on Gad and me and stroked our heads. I have told you before. Your words show signs of envy. These are devilish thoughts. Don't let those tail bearers and the malicious ignite the flames of envy in you. Father, we'd like to play with Joseph. Why can't we? I have no objection. He is your brother. Who says you can't play with him? I'm certain that he enjoys playing with you as well. Can we play with him now? What are you waiting for? Go on. <laughs> Don't you want to take the sheep to the plane? Forgive us, Father.
Well, well, well. What a handsome group of young men. How are you? What are you doing? We're warming milk for our lunch. How wonderful. Would you not enjoy having a surprise guest? Who are you? What are you doing here? Oh, I'm from the neighboring village. Although I'm not a shepherd, I sometimes bring the sheep to the pasture. What's the matter with you? It seems like you're not happy to have me here. Why should we be? Oh, well, quite right. Seeing a stranger doesn't make anybody happy, does it? Truth is that I've come to see you. It is a real pleasure meeting you all. Do you know us? Oh, yes. Everybody around here knows the children of Prophet Jacob. Then why are you surprised to see us? Well, I dreamt of you last night. Can you believe that? Yesterday I saw you when I was asleep, and today, while I'm awake. Isn't that strange? Well, we'd love to hear. Tell us. Well, it was a very strange dream. I couldn't figure it out. I saw you, ten brothers, carrying aloft a child on a litter, as if you were his slaves and he was your master. Then I saw the child riding on a chariot, and you were ten horses pulling the chariot. Then I saw him on a throne, having chained you, and you were working for him as shepherds and farmers. I apologize if I've upset you with that dream, but it's not important. Don't worry about it. I'd better go. What an ugly, loathsome face he had. Where did he go? He couldn't have left so fast. He vanished. I don't know. Perhaps he vanished into thin air. I don't know who he was, but his words have made me think. His dream resembled Joseph's. Hello, Father. Hello, Father. Hello, Hello, Hello my darling. Hello, Father. Hello, Father. How are Hello. you? Hello. Hello. How are you? Greetings to the Prophet of God. Greetings to you, my son. What's wrong? Have you fought someone? Yes, I fought your children. Why? Because they destroyed our farm and had their sheep graze in it. And when I protested, they beat me up. Judah! Simeon, Levi, come here. Why did you let the sheep destroy this boy's farm? We can't stop the sheep, Father. It isn't so bad. Why did you beat him up? You can perform Lex Talionis. Prophet of God, please forgive them. But tell them not to let their sheep on our farm again. That's all I ask. They said they're the owners of Canaan, but they can do whatever they want and take their sheep wherever they like. Who has given you the right to take the sheep onto other people's farms? Who has told you that we are the owners of Canaan? My son, 
I apologize. I promise our sheep will never damage your farm again. And I shall compensate you for your loss. We made a mistake. We apologize. In Canaan, everybody possesses his own property. The real owners of Canaan are the Palestinians, not us. Then where are we from, Father? My grandfather, your great-grandfather, Prophet Abraham, whose shrine is in Machpelah, was from Ur in Sumer and Chaldea in the south of Mesopotamia. It is near your birthplace in Haran. Before then, the Palestinians lived here. The ancestors of this young man lived in Canaan centuries before we did. However, after a hundred years, all of us, the Hebrew and the Canaanites, are from Canaan. We must all be friends with each other. Joseph. Joseph, son. Wake up. Wake up. Hello, father. Hello, my dear son. Are you dreaming? Yes. It was strange. The kind you told me not to tell anyone about. Even your father? <laughs> I was sitting beside the sheep. Joseph said to his father, Father, I saw eleven stars, and the sun, and the moon. I saw them prostrating themselves before me. I was mesmerized by the stars and the moon, the sun 
when you woke me up. Guess was right. You mustn't tell anybody about this dream, especially your brothers. They will envy you because of their pride. Don't tell your sister or stepmothers either. They will tell everybody. The son that will prostrate before you has now knelt before you. And the moon and the eleven stars will one day prostrate before you. You will one day be a great man of high position and lofty spirituality. On that day, your father, mother, and all your brothers will prostrate before you. But until then, tell no one of your dream especially not your brothers. I fear that they may envy you and conspire against you. Conspire? My brothers would conspire? The sons of the messenger of God? Do not underestimate the power of Satan. You see, Satan is the human's overt foe. It deceives them, even if they're the children of the prophets. God has chosen you for him, and shall grant you the knowledge to interpret dreams. He shall grant to you and Jacob's family his utmost blessing, as he granted the utmost blessing to your fathers, Isaac and Abraham. He granted them the position of leadership and prophethood. May God bless your soul. I have brought your children. Do you see? They are both healthy and happy. Mother, and he left us as well. Now I feel even more the pain of your separation. I know nobody can fill your empty space for Joseph and Benjamin. But Leah and I do our best, so that they feel less the loss of their mother. Father, may I tell mother my dream? I have glad tidings for you, Rachel. 
Our son will become a prophet in the future. I learned this from his dream last night. Mother, Auntie Lee and Father are very kind to Joseph and me. Don't worry about us. Rest in peace, Rachel. Rest in serenity. I shan't let the pain of mother's loss hurt our children. Hello, father. Hello, daughter. How are you? Sit down. I'll bring you more wheat. Mm -hmm. Where did father take you? To pay homage to the tomb of my mother, Rachel. Why did you want to see me? Because last night, Jacob appointed his successor. I thought you might be eager to hear. Well then, rest assured, it is none of our children. It's Joseph, Rachel's son. You had better explain this more clearly. I woke up and heard Jacob telling Joseph, don't tell your dream to your brothers. You are God's chosen messenger, heir to Abraham. And most interestingly, he said, you shall be your brother's leader and superior. They will prostrate before you. And then he knelt before Joseph, and he was kissing him. Although I wish Jacob's successor to be one of my children, I submit to the will of God and the prophet of God. So you can tolerate Joseph's superiority to your own children? I have no choice. I accept Jacob's decision. You two had better do the same. But I am unable to. I also think we must obey. Lady Leah is certainly right. We must obey the orders of the messenger of God. I hope that Joseph's brothers are able to accept it. How naive you are. You mustn't tell Leah everything you feel. Sit down. We must do something. We must talk to our children. Joseph sleeps beside him. We don't know what his dream was. Joseph dreamed about being your leader. Be sure of that. There's nothing to it. We'll just ask Joseph. Do you think he would tell you if he had a dream? Yes. Joseph doesn't lie, does he? He'd tell us if he did. Come on, let's go. Judah, wait. Wait.
Joseph. Yes, brother. You know that we love our good and kind brother, Joseph. I too love my brothers. By the way, Judah, when will I be a grown-up like you? You're grown already. And you know well what a lofty and great position you have before God. What position do you mean? The one you were shown in your dream last night. Do you remember that dream? The one you had? We became very happy when we heard you had a dream that showed your high and lofty position. Did Father tell you I had a dream? I didn't tell anybody but him about that dream. It wasn't Father who told us. I overheard it. When I came to the yard at midnight, I heard Father telling you not to tell anybody about your dream. He said you'd have a lofty position in the future. Will you tell us the dream? Did you also hear Father tell me that I wasn't to tell anyone about it? What's the matter? Your brothers want to share in your happiness. I know that you love me. Perhaps there's no problem in my telling you about it. However, I can't disobey Father. I'm sorry, Judah. I'll tell Father that you wanted to slap Joseph. Don't do that, Dina. Judah wasn't going to slap him. He's just a little angry with Joseph. Why was Judah angry? What did you tell him? I didn't tell him what he wanted. To hear about my dream. How did he know that I had a dream? Nobody knows except Father. I'll tell Father that Judah wanted to beat you. No, don't. Why? Because I love my brothers. I don't want Father to be angry with them. Dina, why doesn't Judah like me? Father always told me, brothers must love and respect each other. I don't understand, Judah. Villa, Silpa, Leah. Come down, I've brought wheat. Hello, Father. Hello, Father. Hello. Hello. Bilha, prepare the handmill. We don't have any flour for dough. This is the year's first sack of wheat. We separated the straw with so much difficulty. Come on, son. Father, all my brothers know last night I had a dream. How did they find out? I'm not sure. They asked me about it, and when I didn't answer, they shouted at me. Bilha? Bilha. Yes, Prophet of God. I have witnessed your tale bearing and conspiring a few times now. But I kept silent, hoping you would stop and correct your behavior. But it seems that you have decided to continue to do so until you instigate the brothers to fight each other. I don't know what the messenger of God is talking about. I'm innocent. I was beside your room last night. Joseph was sleeping there, and he told me his dream there. Nobody knew about it except Joseph and myself. Who except you could have heard the dream and its interpretation? I swear to you that last night I You're was... lying. You're lying! I knew I heard a sound in your room last night, but I ignored what I'd heard. Because I noticed you and your children 
appeared asleep. But I was right, wasn't I? So far, you've deceived Zilpa a few times and made her bear tales. You've instigated Judah and his brothers against Joseph. You have made your children hate Joseph, and I have kept silent. If you repeat your previous mistakes one more time, I will take my children and send you back to your town, Haran in Babylon. Do you understand? No, 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 no. I promised the prophet of God never again to cause him to be enraged and always obey him. Forgive me. I'm your mere maidservant. I have nobody but you. Bury me here, but don't send me back to Aaron. No, no. <laughs> Without a doubt, the sun is our father, the moon is our mother, and the eleven stars are just obvious. Father has spoiled this worthless, motherless child so much that he dreams of us worshipping him. Not only us, he sees our parents prostrating before him. Nobody is leaving here today until this thing between Joseph and us is settled. I love all my children. My love for Joseph is, is because of God's love for him. I hope my other children can understand this love and be kind to Joseph as well and not be hostile. Does he really think that he is superior to us and his own parents? And that he will be our leader? Joseph is just deluded. All his imagination is, is the result of father's excessive attention and mother's excessive kindness. I don't know why father loves Joseph more than us. What does he have that we lack? We are the ones responsible for providing for the family. We sow and reap the crops. We shepherd the sheep and rescue them from the wolves. We are the ones who feed the sheep. We clean the sheep hold. We clean up their dung. The kindness and attention of our parents, and the ants even, is given to Joseph. A weak, tiny child who is even unable to clean his own nose. As if having all father's attention wasn't enough, now he's dreaming of becoming superior to every one of us. I think father is misled, and this is all his own fault. But I won't keep quiet, and I won't accept the leadership of Rachel's son. Neither will we, but what's the rational solution? You may lack the courage to utter it, but I do not. Joseph must be killed. These words are dangerous. Don't utter them so easily. Why mustn't I? This way, we get to punish Father for his discrimination. And Joseph can take his dream to be our leader to his grave. Although I'm not as bold as Judah is, I believe also it is the only solution. How do we stand it? Since his birth, Joseph has drawn everybody's attention to him. He receives all the love exclusively. I can't wait any longer. How long do we stand it and not say anything to him in front of our parents? Be careful. Murdering a brother and disobeying father are big sins that will definitely get us punished in hell. I have a solution for that. Repent! A few days after killing Joseph, we will ask God to forgive us. God is gracious and merciful. He'll forgive us. That's just how all sinners think. We'll sin now, and maybe later we will repent. How can this fail? At 
after killing Joseph and attracting Father's kindness, we will repent and correct ourselves. Yes. What if God denies us the blessing of repentance? Not always can a sinner simply repent. And if we can't repent, we will be accursed forever. And the posterities will eternally remember this shame. The children of a prophet of God killed their own brother. I agree with Levi. It's useless. Although maybe if Levi could come up with a better solution. Oh, yes. It's easy to be all pious, but you can't come up with anything better. Don't we deserve Father's attention? Of course we do. It's his love we want. All right, then. We do something so that Father can't see Joseph ever again. I get it. We separate Joseph from Father. That's the way to do it. After a while, he will forget Joseph and pay attention to us. That's impossible. Father doesn't let Joseph out of his sight. At least we can think about it. And accept that killing Joseph is not good. We'll find a way to separate Joseph from father. <laughs>